She was the most beautiful Serena in Russian history, and she outshone Catherine the Great. She was better than Catherine the Great in beauty and politics. Compared to Catherine the Great's beauty of power, her beauty alone was enough to win the hearts of all men. Even her nephew spoke her name before he died. And she was Elizabeth Petrovna, the sixth Serena of Russia. Of course, the glory of the future was a distant dream for Elizabeth, who was only 16 years old at the time. Now she was just a naughty girl who liked to skip school, ride horses with her guards on the beach, run around in the mountains, and love new things like snails and insects. But it was her innocence that attracted the guards. Elizabeth's truancy was another headache for the tutor. The tutor resigned from Peter the Great. This was the eighth tutor hired this year. Peter the Great became so angry that he asked the guards to bring Elizabeth back. At dinner, Peter the Great accused Elizabeth of being too wild. He knew that Elizabeth had learned everything, but studying was not only about knowledge, but also about rules. Although Elizabeth is often naughty and skip school, she speaks French, German, and Italian. Elizabeth combines the opposite personalities of her parents. She had her father's Peter the Great's wit and temper, and the restless energy to ride, hunt, and dance. She also had her mother's natural charm and sympathy. Elizabeth had always positively admitted, but never corrected Peter the Great's advice on rules. Peter the Great sighed helplessly and said that perhaps Elizabeth would understand better if she married. Then he stated his purpose. He's invited Duke Karl, the first heir to Sweden, to Russia for a match. He was not decided which princess would marry, but Peter the Great favored Elizabeth. But Elizabeth had always believed in free love. So how could she accept an arranged marriage? She criticized Duke Karl's portrait, making Duke Karl look like a genetic mutant. Peter the Great wanted to hit her, but when he saw his favorite daughter, he took it out on the food. And Elizabeth was so intimidated, she had to go to the ball to hide her shocking appearance. Elizabeth had her maid of honor take off her custom-made gown. She had to make herself look even uglier. So Elizabeth showed up at the ball dressed as a man, but it only emphasized her long legs. Duke Carl was instantly attracted to Elizabeth and asked her to dance with him. This didn't sit well with her older sister, Anna, who had a crush on Carl. Anna was always in the background because of Elizabeth's beauty. When they think of Russian princesses, they think of Elizabeth, not Anna. Elizabeth had no intention of marrying Carl or competing with her sister. She turned down Carl on the grounds that she was dressed as a man and could only dance with women. Carl shows his disappointment. Elizabeth has already had a crush on her guard, Baturin, and winks at him at the ball. When she sees Baturin leaving the ball, she thinks he's jealous and rushes after him to explain her true feelings. Their kiss was seen by a guard who had long been fond of Elizabeth, thinking Baturin's taking of his goddess first kiss was an affront to his honor. He wanted to fight Baturin, though dueling was strictly forbidden by Peter the Great. Baturin saw that his mind was made up and agreed. That was Elizabeth's charm. One unintentional gesture and countless men would die for her. The duel ended when Baturin didn't want to fight, but the guards did and wounded Baturin. In a few days, Peter the Great will be away on business. He said that when he returned, he would marry Elizabeth and Carl, because Carl chose Elizabeth over the two princesses. Before Elizabeth could plead, Peter the Great said, it was his decision and no one could object. It was either marry Duke Carl, or go to the North Pole and grow vegetables. When Peter the Great left, Anna was not happy. <laughs> Elizabeth didn't want to argue with her sister, but found Duke Carl. She even lied about losing her virginity before marriage, and being a morally deficient girl. But Carl didn't seem to believe her. He seemed to go crazy with Elizabeth and said he didn't mind Elizabeth's behavior. He would keep Elizabeth's secret for the rest of her life. Carl's infatuation caused Elizabeth a lot of problems. But what she didn't expect was for Peter the Great to break off the engagement. The Russian queen was caught in the act of fornication by Tsar Peter. The queen was so terrified, she trembled. <laughs> But the calm before the storm made it all the more frightening. Peter the Great kicked her lover out of bed, then helped the queen with her dress. He smoothed the queen's hair and dragged her by the hair from the bedroom to the study. 500 meters away, the cries of pain echoed through the palace, but no one dared to stop the furious R. The lover was so frightened that he pissed all over the bed. After an agonizing ordeal, Ekaterina was freed in the study, but this woman, who had committed a terrible crime, did not care about the pain. She bowed down and begged for her husband's forgiveness. Peter the Great did not kill her, but did something far worse. Peter the Great produced a testament saying that he had intended to make Ekaterina his successor as empress. But now it seemed impossible. Peter the Great angrily tore the edict to pieces and spat on Ekaterina's face. He declared that not only would Ekaterina not be an empress, but she would not even be queen. After dealing with Ekaterina, 
Pete's condition worsened and it collapsed in a coma. Elizabeth was unaware of this major change in history. She was still naively thinking about romance. When Elizabeth learned it, that Baturin had been injured in the duel, she was furious at the guard's childish behavior. She punishes the guards and then goes in disguise to check on Baturin's condition. Elizabeth said that Peter the Great was going to marry her to Carl, but she only loved Baturin, so she wants to run away with Baturin. But Baturin refuses Elizabeth and says that a guard and a princess can't be together. Elizabeth leaves Baturin's room in tears, leaving a piece of jewelry behind. Baturin picks up the jewelry on the floor and holds it in his hand to remember his first love. Elizabeth went back to her room, sad and ready to accept the reality. But Peter the Great, who has just woken up from his coma, says that Elizabeth's engagement is off the table. Carl has changed his mind and has chosen Anna as his fiancé. Anna is so happy and excited that she kisses Peter the Great's hand. Peter the Great pushes her away and calls Elizabeth to him, whispering that he has other plans for her. He hoped Elizabeth would not refuse him. This confused Elizabeth. On the other side, Ekaterina, in captivity, is in a state of anxiety. It's not that she's afraid of losing the throne. She's just afraid that she'll lose everything and go to the guillotine. Then Peter the Great sent him a gift. It was the hat of her lover. It made Ekaterina vomit. She turned to her lover and confident Alex in horror. He said that was the only way they could go if they didn't want to go to the guillotine. He even gave his love rival's head a meaningful look. In that evening, Peter the Great had his close minister, Menshikov, write Elizabeth's last will and testament. Then he signed and sealed it with the king's seal, declaring it valid. I don't know whether it was because his wish had been fulfilled or for some other reason. Peter the Great lost his breath as soon as the seal was affixed. The death now ran through the palace. Elizabeth, unable to grieve, rushes to her bedchamber to see her father for the last time, but is stopped by a guard at the door. He said it was Ekaterina's order. Ekaterina was looking for Peter the Great's will and wanted to know who would take over the throne and what would happen to her, but she couldn't find it. Elizabeth was shouting at the door. Ekaterina had to let Elizabeth in so they wouldn't suspect anything. Then she resumed her search for the edict, and then she let Elizabeth watch her husband die and his wife left. Peter the Great, the most powerful Tsar in Russian history, died with his cheating wife and her lover by his side, looking for the edict. <laughs> <laughs> Ekaterina was desperate to find the edict. Now Dolgorukov has decided to install Peter II, Peter the Great's grandson, and now there's an edict that they don't even know exists. These are all obstacles for Ekaterina to overcome, and yet she's turned her chambers upside down and still can't find the edict. Ekaterina turned to Elizabeth. It suddenly occurred to her that Elizabeth was the most likely successor. Ekaterina grabbed her hand and told her that Elizabeth was born to Peter the Great before she married him, that she was illegitimate and had no right to inherit and that Peter had been so angry before he died, that his impulsive will didn't count. She told Elizabeth to hand it over. She meant that the heir to the Russian throne could only be Ekaterina, but Elizabeth didn't know about the edict. In the end, it was a heartbreaking farce, and the edict never surfaced. Since Peter the Great had not decided on a successor, the senators had to choose one, but the senators were not of the same persuasion. Some of them favor Ekaterina, while others favor Peter II, Peter the Great's grandson. The only thing they all have in common is that they are either unwise or young, so they can make the senator regent. Almost all of them wanted to be regent, including Menshikov, who had the testament. He secretly gave it to Elizabeth to say that he would make a legitimate heir to the throne and that he would lead an army to crush any opposition. But Elizabeth was in a state of grief. Her father had just died, and she didn't want to worry about that. She asked Menshikov to leave the edict to her mother. Menshikov refused. He said seriously that if the edict reached Ekaterina, it would be destroyed. Menshikov, in order to cover up his regency ambitions, used grandiose excuses to lure Elizabeth to the throne. He even suggested that Ekaterina might have had something to do with Peter the Great's death. But these words irritated Elizabeth, who was already suffering from the loss of a loved one. She was furious and drove Menshikov away. I'd say Menshikov's a tough guy. Two. If he couldn't be a regent, he had to be a powerful henchman. He quickly gave the edict to Ekaterina as a gesture of goodwill. He also said that Elizabeth knew about the edict and even came to him for it. But his loyalty to Ekaterina kept him lying about not knowing. Menshikov was trying to hide the fact that he was a traitor. With Menshikov's urging, Ekaterina soon became convinced that Elizabeth had betrayed her and needed to be eliminated. But for now, it's business as usual, now that they have the edict. Alex's immediate thought is to burn it, but the guards have sent word that the senator is contacting the military for a coup. That was a shock to Alex. The battle for the throne is still being waged by force. So instead of burning the edict, Alex told Ekaterina to hide it. If they lose, they'll use the edict to install the puppet Elizabeth on the throne. A chance to turn the tide. Then Alex rushed to the Praetorian Guard to try and rally the troops. The entire Russian palace was shrouded in the sound of war. Elizabeth's guards hear the news and rush to inform Elizabeth of a mutiny. No sooner had they spoken than there was the sound of footsteps outside the door. Elizabeth looked through the door and saw a large army gathering at the palace. 